Isis Bride allowed to return to the UK to fight to regain citizenship. In the United Kingdom, UK judges ruled that 20-year-old Shamima Begum, the British teenager who left uh, London with two other girls in 2015 to join ISIS in Syria, should be allowed to return to the UK to challenge the deprivation of her British citizenship. The Court of Appeal partially overturned an earlier ruling by the Special Immigration Appeals Commission, or SEAC for short, which held that she had not been uh, illegally rendered stateless when she was in Syria because she was entitled to a Bangladeshi citizenship. But it is not clear how Begum would return from Syria, and the Court of Appeal acknowledged that she could uh, quote, be arrested and charged upon her arrival in the UK and held in custody to await trial. The news of her potential return to the UK and re, uh, the potential for her to regain her citizenship has been the cause of great controversy. So I think this is a good, you know, yeah, don't take away her citizenship. Let her come back and arrest her and take her to jail. Uh, that's how it should be done. Like, don't devalue what it means to be a UK citizen because of one person. Like, like, how much are you seriously going to question the entire like the value of what it means to be a UK citizen because of you know one you know because of how much security threat one person could cause to you? Like, this is the you know how there's always this repeat thing, like giving up liberty because of security keeps repeating and repeating and repeating over history. This seems to, this one seems to be a, that times a million because usually people scare you with security, a lot greater security than this to take away a small amount of liberty. This is like one person security threat to completely devalue not just like this law or that law, the entire meaning of what it means to be a UK to be able to undo being a UK citizen, like that is not <laughs> at all a fair trade here. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Yes, you, you're a citizen and you committed the crime and you'll be trialed as a UK citizen for the crimes that you committed. You don't take people's citizenship away. Like, don't do not do that, anyways. Um, I feel like we should provide a little bit more background on the case. So when Shamima was 15 years old, she left the UK. She ran away with two of her other female friends from school to go join ISIS. Um, they had been in contact with members of ISIS or some proxy group. And they had been instructed on how to leave the UK how to go to Syria. And once they were in Syria, they were transported to ISIS territory where they were subsequently married off to ISIS fighters, male fighters. And Shamima was 15 at the time. The two other girls that she left with were killed. Um, one of them was killed in an attack on the house that she was in at the time. I can't remember how the other girl was killed. Um, and Shamima was married to a Belgian ISIS fighter who I believe has since been taken into custody and is now in Belgium. Um, she had three kids with this person. Um, all of her children have died. Um, when her case became publicized, she was around the age of 19. Um, that's when she started wanting to come back to the UK. Um, she had an interview with a Scottish interviewer. I can't remember the name of the man or the publication. She was nine months pregnant at the time. And um, he was talking to her about what led her to want to go into ISIS, and she was just talking about how she was very attracted to the ideology. She talked about how she saw um, beheaded heads in garbage bins, and it didn't phase her. It, she was, it was fine with her. Um, she wanted to go because it was an ideal um, Islamic state where you can be a good Muslim and um, all of this stuff. So it's highly controversial um people on one hand there are some people who have more empathy for her because they think she was groomed at the age of 15 
Um, other people look at the interviews that she gave where she shows basically no remorse. And um, along the way, when she was pregnant and then she gave birth to her third child, um, this is when the fight over her UK citizenship really went into effect. So the UK government stripped her of her citizenship because they believed that she had a Bengali citizenship because her parents are Bengali. Now, she does not have a Bengali citizenship. According to the UN, it is illegal to render someone stateless. She was essentially rendered stateless. She's never been to Bangladesh. Um, yeah, I said Bengali. I meant Bangladeshi. Um, yeah, she was eligible for a Bangladeshi citizenship. She's never been there. And so now they say that this was all done um, uh, incorrectly because she was not there in the UK while the trial was taking place. Other people accuse her of just using the child that she had at the time to try to get her UK citizenship back because that child was a UK citizen by law. That child died while in some ISIS bride camp in Syria. And in the meantime, ICE, other ISIS brides in this refugee camp have been attacking her for showing her face on camera. So it's a really complicated situation. Um, but now that I provided that background, was she go born, ahead, guys. Was she, born in, was she born in the UK? Let me double check. I believe she was. Uh -huh. Um. Okay, so here's the thing. Even even if she was, uh, if she had a Bengali citizenship, and it was, but she's British born. So there's no way that she, even if she had a Bengali citizenship, taking away her UK citizenship would not be against international laws, but it would still completely dismiss the value of having a UK citizenship, and it mean it completely undermines, you know. One of the very foundations of what makes it what makes somebody be a UK citizen, and so it wouldn't be against international law. But like you guys are trading something so important from the security risk that you might get from one person, and you don't even have to suffer that security risk if you arrest her as soon as she lands in the UK. Uh, so I and and even if she's like if she uh, even after she pays for a crime, you can still have her under watch. Like you don't like there are. There are other ways to deal with the security threats other than completely undermining the, you know, your in, everything that is this UK citizenship is based on. But Rivka, you wanted to say something. Um, I wanted to say, now, I don't know. I'm actually looking it up. Maybe somebody could look it up while I'm talking. But in the United States, you can lose your United States citizenship if you commit an act of treason against the United States or if you fight for a foreign army, there's specific exceptions. If you enter military service for a foreign country, it depends on the situation. Um, there are certain conditions where that happens. So um, I don't know about British, if they still, if they have these same laws. But if a person commits treason, against the country with which they are a citizen of or also joins the military to fight against the country that they are a citizen of. I know that in the United States, I don't know, I have to look up if when this has happened in recent times, but I know that that is one, two of the conditions that could potentially cause you to have for them to renounce you as a citizen of this country because you apparently have chosen to fight against your country or you've committed treason against your country. So I do understand your point about saying, you know, let her be brought to justice for doing this terrible thing. But at the same time, she has entered into, you know, she joined ISIS, which is fighting against her country, could be considered military service. I don't know if she, you know, actually shot anybody or not. And it could also be considered an act of treason. So I'm right, not but sure again, that, I think what, I mean, I, I guess I see both sides of it. And I do No, see there's only one point, side, which is... I do see your point the right about side. the value of the citizenship, and I do 
understand the idea of bringing her back and making her face justice for what she's done. I get that. But I also know that she wants to, I would imagine, most people would, would rather come back and sit in a British jail than be where she is. I don't care what she, what people rather. It's it's not about what they want. It's not about satisfying people's sense of revenge. About like, oh my god, I I hate her so much. I don't want her to get anything that she wants. It's not about any of that. Okay, um, and you know, wait, hold on, let me mute the doggy. Okay, oh, we both muted at the same time. Okay, so the, this is about okay. So in modern countries where it's based on enlightenment values. Everybody gets their rights when they become a citizen, and the, the people that get their rights include the criminals. The criminals also have their rights. Uh, they have you have due process. They they get to defend themselves. Uh, they have a judge coming out, and you have people investigating. And they they you know your mobility is taken away. Your freedom to be mobile is taken away from you until we decide if you committed a crime. And if you committed a crime. Uh, you know, you get punishment fitting of what the crime that you have committed. All of that is with the assumption that if you're a citizen, you have the right to all of these things. You don't just take all of this balance and system that you created and all these values that made your country a better place. And all of a sudden, oh, we don't like this one person. He's so, no, she's a very like this particular person. We hate her so much. Let's just topple all of this. Like, just like it's like pulling the rug. Uh, from under a very elaborate and carefully designed system that makes us different from all these goddamn fucking terrorists. And then you have one terrorist all of a sudden coming out and like, ooh, be scared of me. Like, look at me, I'm ISIS. And like, oh my God, let's throw everything like uh, out, all of these values and all of these institutions and all of these processes. Uh, and we're just like, oh, you're a citizen. Oh, get, uh, let, look at this, all your rights, all of the things that we said that we stand for out the window because of one person like no come on like it's not that's not a worthy trade-off anyways sorry do you know if they're going to try her um in civilian court or in a military court because if she's tried in her military court it's going to have there are different rules and you don't have the same rights by the way at whatever, least in the united states yeah i know I, whatever rights you have it shouldn't be like Okay, that's a separate discussion. I'm it's not one saying one's better right, than the other. Let me say. I'm asking because it actually will make a difference in terms okay, of let me her answer. abilities to. Let me let me answer. There's a that's a separate discussion on with what, what rights she should have. I'm talking about the fact that she should have rights. Okay, that's a separate conversation. Like if you take the citizenship away from somebody, it, it's not about which rights should she have anymore. Every single right was taken out. <laughs> right so it's not about even like she has no rights she's not a citizen anymore and i think that's a dangerous precedent to set uh, to set that's what i think um and i'm right okay let's rivka did that answer your question or no no because You're i don't muted. think that um it was i i asked it directly but it doesn't matter um we can move no. on because we've already spent a lot of time on this no, but I, but I see your point. I just think like the the issue is about like making sure whatever rights people have, we don't just scrap them. But I see, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good. Point. I, I I'm not suggesting that. I'm just I was saying that you're yeah. saying you have certain, you know, rights, but depending on what court you, they try you you're tried in with this particular thing, if it's considered treason, you you want at least in the United States under military court, you're not entitled to some of the same rights that you yeah. are in civilian court so, so yeah but you still have but you still but you still have some rights because of because of being a united states citizen right like the idea of you being a u.s citizen still matters even if you're being trialed under military court mm -hmm, but they're not you the same my, rights i know they're not and the same right but and the right to I, see evidence and all those things are not the same at all. I know they're not the same, but it's different. Even under military court, you're treat, you're, it's different than not being a U.S. citizen. It, yeah, it's different than having nothing at all. Yes, you're correct. Yes. It's, right. it's, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. and so just to clarify, yeah, she's still stateless, and this is just a trial regarding her citizenship. 
Now, what happens if they decide to um, rescind the dissolution of her citizenship would then move towards military court versus civilian court, etc. Bangladesh has said that she's not a Bangladeshi citizen. She will not be allowed to enter the country. And if she was a Bangladeshi citizen, and if she was somehow moved to Bangladesh, she would face the death penalty because they have a zero tolerance policy for terrorism. Um, so she's still stuck in Syria in Al Hol, um, just this camp. Um, so yeah, the Home Office of the UK said that they're going to fight this decision. Um, they want to challenge um, uh, this uh, rule that lets her come back to fight this, and so it's still ongoing. And then even if she through this fight of if they're even going to let her come to the UK to face trial for getting her citizenship back, not even facing trial for any crimes she may have committed. Um, they still don't, no one knows how they're going to get her here. And no one knows what's going to happen to her if she will not here or there um, when she does get there. All right. Yeah. And just to be clear, this is not about us saying what, what she deserves or not or doesn't deserve. This is more about, um, even the worst of all people deserve um, to have their rights, right? They, they deserve to, uh, every country should with, um, make sure that they defend the rights of their worst citizens, okay? Anyways, let's move on to the next news. I hope, like, Rivka, did I, I, I hope I let you, like, make your points and everything. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I'm not, yeah. and I want to be clear. I actually don't know right. if I have a side on this because I do agree that people right. should the, the even you know criminals or people who have done terrible things still have rights because right. that's the whole point of being a nation of laws not of men right exactly exactly great great point thank you for joining us subscribe to our channel hit the bell thingy if you haven't I don't know why what has what's holding you back okay if you haven't subscribed to our channel why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button. But nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even you know, people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritize. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 